So, uh, there was a lot of weeping going on upstairs when I left that day because my mother was absolutely undone and she said to my dad, you know, don't let him go, don't let him go. But my father held to, uh, to, to the idea that it you know, would be probably smarter for little Walter to get out. Otherwise, he would have been drafted into the Russian army, the communist army, would have lost another three years. So that's uh, the story. Um, I had a cousin in, in Hendersonville who raved about this area, and uh, so we thought, well, we'll, we'll look here. And uh, it was really perfect. I mean, aside from a, a milder climate, uh, we, we were happy to see the university and a conservative synagogue. Um, and natural areas all around, cultural opportunities, a good medical service. So it had really everything that we wanted. It's so pretty and we're glad we're here. And when I met uh, Walter and uh, Gail, I was equally excited because these were uh, people who, who, uh, who brought uh, so much uh, potential richness to the, uh, uh, the Jewish community here. Anyway, that was when uh, he first uh, uh, came, and uh, of, you know, over the years, he has really, uh, you know, proved to be everything that we uh, we thought he was going to be, and more. When Phil and I uh, started the Elder Hostel here in Asheville in 1999, we knew we had to have something different because there were Elder Hostels all over the the, the area. And Walter was perfect for a Jewish theme. Everybody uh, who came to the Elder Hostel, he was our most popular teacher. He's been popular all over the country. If you look in the Elder Hostel catalog and uh, see a course on Christianity out of the matrix of Judaism, you know that Walter is teaching it. He loved to teach a, a understanding between Christians and Jews. Somewhere around 99 or 2000, he began teaching uh, every single semester for us, which was the best education that any student at Marshall College could ever get, mm. just being in the room with uh, Dr. Walter Ziffer. What we used to say was, it doesn't matter what he's teaching, get in his class, you'll, you'll, learn, you'll learn something that you would never, ever get in any other way. Um, you really have no idea how far a survivor testimony like Dr. Ziffer's can go because you don't see all of the evidence right away. Mm. And I'm especially grateful that he takes the time to speak to us because then we can take his story to the students and then they can take it to their parents, they can take it into their own hearts and begin to change the world. Mm. One of my favorite quotes from Walter um, and I think this epitomizes his whole teaching tone is that if you do not ask questions, you're asking for trouble. Walter had taught me any you know, of the courage enough to survive that you have it inside of your heart. I think in some ways his presence sort of puts a stamp of approval on, you know, different activities and people feel like, wow, if Walter's here, this must really be important. This must really matter. You know, when Walter's there, there's a there's a uh, a joy I think actually that surrounds him that kind of permeates out to everybody in the sanctuary. Uh, he's got a wonderful laugh. Uh, he's attentive to things which are going on, and he's thoughtful and responsive to to what's going on around him. And I think all of that affects all of us in a very positive way. And so he takes the role of a leader, of an educator very, very seriously recognizing that they have a real profound impact on pe how people actually will behave throughout their lives in this world. Walter injects a good amount of uh, doubt into our study sessions here. Uh, occasionally we kid and call it heresy. 
He is our resident heretic, although there are some other heretics among us who, who study, which I think is extraordinarily healthy. He's very considerate, extremely considerate. Um, he's very interested in our home. He's very vocal and demonstrative in his loving me. Um, he loves to do the dishes, but he hates to dry and put them away, so we have an arrangement. Um, he, he is a, um, a superb uh, seasoner of food and, uh, and a taster of food. And I am challenged in the way of seasoning. And I don't taste while I'm cooking. So he, uh, I, I ask him to do that. And he can be downstairs, writing, reading, concentrating on something for sure. And uh, if I tell him that's what I need, he comes right up. Yeah, they're not, you know, not everybody who reaches a ripe old age uh, arrives at wisdom. And I think Walter has really arrived at uh, a stage in life that really can be categorized as the wisdom stage. Yeah, Walter has every tool you could ever need in his shop. I mean, he, you ask, could I do this? Could I cut this this way? He says, hold on one sec, and he goes back and he picks out some different rocks or he picks out a piece of metal and he comes back with a different tool and, all, and he's got everything you need. Yeah, Walter's got every tool in the world. <laughs> yes, he has the world's best sense of humor and he loves to laugh. Yeah. He likes to make, see other people happy or get different people to smile. They're having a bad day, brightens up their day. They would always tell stories um, about, oh, well, Dr. Ziffer says, you know, I, when we ask him about something in Genesis, his response is, I don't know, I wasn't there. Um, <laughs> that's one of their favorite lines. <laughs> <laughs> what I was saying is I have a uh, slogan that you know that I like to say about Walter, which is that if Walter Ziffer can have a nice smile on his face and have a nice day, I can have a nice smile on my face and have a nice day. His, his love for his family, his family of origin, is um, is really deep. To see, to hear, and see him say Kaddish at his at his the graves of his ancestors um, it's really moving to me his determination to finish any task that he starts he wrote a memoir it took him day and night for a year and I, I mean it was a revelation to me to see him working at this table behind you um, until he got it finished and and uh, making sure that all the facts were right contacting everybody by phone or by letter who was involved to make sure that he that he had it right. That's great. I just hope he doesn't uh, start tearing, crying, because uh, he's very much affected, very moved, when people do nice things for him. <laughs>